review on the Vampire Diaries. Uh, sorry, it took me forever to get this video up. Uh, not so much. At, played by Zach Rorig. First of all, Zach Rorig wears glasses. Weird, like when I was watching the cast interviews and I saw him with glasses, I was just like, Wah! It was nuts. I was like, you're wearing glasses, bro. It's nuts. He rocks them, though. He rocks them out. Uh, besides from that, uh, Zach, Zach Rorig, I think he does a good job playing Matt. Um, I feel like they really should give... I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Every single one of these actors is good, but the material that they're given just drags them down so much that it's just like the writers aren't giving them a chance to shine. And it's just like they could totally shine like they did in seasons one and season, like the originals, like Rebecca and Klaus and stuff. They're actors. Um, Danny, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Claire Holt and Joseph Morgan. They are good actors, really good actors, but the material they're given is so poor that it drags down their acting. And that just upsets me. Knowing that these are good actors that are given poor material, it just kills me. But, I'm sorry, going back to Zach, um, I think that he is a good actor. I think he's solid. I buy every word that comes out of his mouth. Um, I really like the episodes where Matt just really gets to show emotion and just takes part in the show because I feel like everyone forgets the fact that Matt is the only person on this entire show who is really, truly human. I mean, yeah, you've got Jeremy, but now he's got this whole stupid Hunter storyline, and he's a psychic, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, Jer like Matt is the one who I feel like has gotten the most shit on this show. I mean, his mom and his dad, they're not dead, but they might as well be. You know, they play no role in his life. He loses his sister, who's his only remaining true family. You know, um, he falls for Elena, and she dumps his ass and goes and hooks up with Stefan. Then he falls for Caroline. They have to break up. And then um, she goes and hooks up with Tyler. I mean, it's just... Matt's character is poorly handled because he is a side character. But I feel like when you handle a show well and you have rec rec recurring characters, you can have episodes where they shine. I mean, like in, epi uh, in season two, the episode where he finds out the truth and kind of freaks out and stuff... I was completely right there with him when he was, you know, because, like, the way he was introduced into all this was a really scary, violent way to be introduced into it. He gets stabbed in the neck, and then when he wakes up, Caroline's talking all kinds of stuff about vampire blood healing humans and stuff, and it just, it's, it, it was it was the worst possible way for him to be introduced into all of this. Um, but anyway, yeah, I thought it was, I, I, think, that char I think that Matt's a very sad character. At times, I really wonder why he hasn't just left town. I mean, if anything, I think Jeremy leaving town in season three would have inspired him to get the hell out of town. I mean, I don't understand why he still hangs out there. What really does he have there? I mean, besides his friends, and that, I use that term loosely because no one really hangs out with Matt anymore. You know, it's just... It's just poorly handled, his character, and I don't understand why he's still in town. I mean, I don't get it, really. I mean, I feel like maybe he was there to be in the season finale of last season so that, you know, Elena could choose him over her or whatever, but now that that's over with, I really don't know what purpose he's going to serve in this new season. I think that Matt needs to just get out of town. I mean, no offense, Zach, I think you're great, but I think you're too good for this show. All right, moving on. Let's go to Jeremy, played by uh, Stephen McQueen. Um, I think that Jeremy is uh, again. I think Stephen McQueen is, an, is a, he's a good he's a good actor. He's a he is a good actor. I mean, um, there are episodes where you really see him shine. I mean, like especially in season one with the episodes like you know um, where Vicky gets staked, uh, the episode where he finds out about it and gets really pissed off at Elena. I mean, like he can he, he he's a he's a good actor. You know, and you you could tell that the entire cast has fun on this set. I think that every actor on this show has their merit. However, as I said, what drags them down is the material they're given. Um, but I think that, you know, he could do better if he was given better. I feel, That's what I really feel like just drags this whole show down. It's the writing, it's the material, it's the way that the story has gone, the way that the characters have gone, that the actors, it's not their fault. They're just as much, they're just as much victims as we are. And it just makes me so mad knowing that, you know, Steve McQueen is a good actor. We saw some good acting from him in season one and season two, and now he's got nothing. And like Matt, he's pretty much a pointless character. I mean, he's only there to be given these mini storylines that give him a small purpose in a fraction of the season, and then we just forget about him. Like, you know, in season one, it was... 
you know, him with Vicky and, you know, him trying to find out the truth and stuff. And that actually worked because it lasted the whole season. You know, he wasn't a big character, but whenever he was on screen and he was trying to find out the truth, you were interested in that. In season two, him trying to become a part of the, the vampire hunting squad, him trying to really step up and become more. You saw that. You felt for his character. And season one, you know, his relationship with Anna and all that, him wanting to become a vampire, you understood all that. And it was pretty compelling. I love Anna and Jeremy because, like, every couple that I love in canon or in shows, you saw them develop. You saw them meet in the library. And even though she really was just using him, you know, for for a more deeper, darker purpose, she started to care about him. And you saw them develop and you understood why Anna fell for Jeremy. You understood why Jeremy fell for Anna because they hung out together. They started liking each other. And, you know, you even understand why Anna fell for Jeremy because, like she said, I have a thing for guys like you, guys who are lost. And Jeremy was lost at that point. You know, and I feel like in season three, the whole ghost storyline would have served a purpose if some ghosts were allowed to stay. I'll get to this when I talk about characters themselves, but like Lexi, Mason, all the other ghosts coming out of nowhere, Bonnie's Graham, they serve no purpose because they get sent back and it doesn't affect the long run of the show. That's why. If you have a plot, if you have a giant plot, story, if you have a giant storyline in a show, you kind of need it to last. You kind of need it to affect the show in the long run, or at least call back to it. But for all these ghosts to be brought back, just to have these attacks, and then go away, and then never be touched on again, or not affect the show in the long run, aside from, you know, giving some information, like, that's why, they're just plot devices! Like, the ghosts come back, um, Mason points Damon into the direction of the cave, Lexi tries to help Stefan, but in the end it doesn't mean shit because Damon ends up just letting him go in the next episode and going to a bar and drinking with him. Like, really? And, like, Bonnie's Graham's coming and just telling her what's happening. Anna showing up and, you know, whatever. It was nice knowing that Anna and her mom found each other, I guess. But in the end, I would have loved to see Jeremy and Anna get back together and Anna stay. Like, Jeremy having a relationship with a ghost, it would have been like, oh my god, really? She's a ghost. But it would have been so much better, because it's just like, you know, how interesting would that have also been? Jeremy having a relationship with a ghost? It would have been so much better if, like, when the door closed, all the ghosts went back, but Anna stayed, and, you know, it's like, no one could see her but Jeremy. And, like, you know, the, the relationship would have had its challenges, obviously. But, you know, I just think it would have been awesome, because I, th I, li I like Anna and Jeremy as a couple. You know, the episode where they first hooked up was great. Um, I will always hate John Gilbert. Hate him. Hate him for doing what he did to Anna. Seriously. You know, it's like, Jeremy's dating a vampire, she needs to die. Elena's teasing two vampire boyfriends, and they both get to live, and she just gets to go on with this love triangle for another two seasons. Why not? Sounds fair. Oh, God. So, yeah, the best person I like with Jeremy is Anna. I loved... Jeremy and Anna together. I thought that was the best relationship that Jeremy's ever been in. I thought that Jeremy's relationship with Vicky was very toxic. I think that Vicky had a whole bag of issues she had to deal with herself before she could have a healthy relationship with anyone. And I'll get to that when we talk about Vicky's character herself. That's why, like, I watched the previous seasons and I see that they did good things with Matt and Tyler and Jeremy and, and, and Caroline and Bonnie and all the other side characters. They did pretty good things with them. Well, aside from Bonnie, because with Bonnie, they just had her vanish um, on episode for episodes on end and then just reappear randomly. But with Matt and Jeremy and Tyler and Caroline and all the other side characters, they did pretty good things with them. And now I've watched season three, and I'm watching season four, and they are not doing anything special with them. They're just there. They're just there to be there. And it upsets me. It really does. Um, so now, you know, Jeremy, and then in season two, his whole thing where he wanted to be, like, he, he was semi-useful, he was semi -useful, but for the most part, useless. He didn't really do anything. Season three, pointless, pointless. He was psychic for this stupid, pointless spirit storyline that went nowhere. Um, you know, his character is really poorly handled, like almost as bad as Bonnie, um, because they, 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 they don't handle Bonnie's character well and they crap all over her, but whatever. So I like Jeremy as a character, but again, I feel like the right it's the writer's fault that he's not of that he 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 can, he can do so much better. And I think that Steven is a good actor. I just think the material he's given is not that great, and that's what drags down his character himself and you know the acting uh, in particular. 
uh, Moni, played by Kat Graham. Now, Bonnie's character is one of my favorites. She is one of my favorites because you you've seen her really grow and change and develop in all of the seasons. Even in season three, when everyone else was crap, Bonnie was pretty solid. Um, the biggest complaint I have for Bonnie in season three is that they paired her off with her stepbrother. Why the hell would they do that? Like, I don't understand why. I don't understand. I don't understand that. It's just, it's ridiculous and it's a joke. It's, 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 it's just another way to fuck with her character. And the fact that no one calls that out, especially Damon, I'd be like, yeah, you know, you're, you're with your stepbrother, right? Oh, and like, oh, they're not blood related. Yeah, but it's weird. Her mother was married to his father, but it's just, it's just weird. It's weird to me. It's, it's, yeah, you know, people have said this before, I'll say it, this isn't clueless, alright? This, this shit ain't cool, I don't like that. They should have given Bonnie an actual relationship, and not Baramy, because I don't like Baramy at all. Seriously, I think that her and Luca in season 2 would have been solid, but the racist writers just had to kill off Jonah and Lucas in the same episode, didn't they? That's another big complaint I have, and I'll get to that when I get to Jonas and Luca. But I think that Bonnie and Luca would have been a good couple. I think that they should have hooked up in season 2. I think that Jonas should have died, and then Luca is alive, Bonnie consoles him, Bonnie and Luca are together, done. Would have been good, you know, and it would have been solid, because you saw, like, I think that Bonnie and Luca had more development than Bonnie and Jeremy, and I say that because all throughout season one, and then through the beginning of season two, Bonnie and Jeremy had absolutely no interaction, and then all of a sudden, the very first episode that they have one scene together is Masquerade, and out of nowhere, there's all this chemistry and all this sexual tension, and it comes out of nowhere. It's completely out of left field for absolutely no reason, and that is why I don't like, um, Bear Me. I don't like it. I don't like Bonnie and Jeremy. I like Bonnie and Luca. But unfortunately, they killed him off, and then it's just, we get nothing from it, which I just hated. But Luca was only there to create a love triangle, a useless love triangle. The rabid love triangles in the show, especially ones like that, that serve no purpose because I'm done. So Bonnie's character, I really like her. I loved her development from season one where she was just starting out. She was making fun of the fact that, you know, oh yeah, I'm psychic. Oh yeah, I'm a witch. But then she, she started getting genuinely scared. And I liked how, I liked how her character was written in season one and season two. You saw her grow. You saw her develop. You saw her become kick ass. I like how she was written. I don't like the fact that she was not written consistently not as a character, but more as in the continuity of the show. She would disappear for episodes on end. It was it was annoying. It was like she we, we would just forget about Bonnie, appear, then gone, appear, and then she's gone, appear, and then she's gone. <sighs> Whatever. All because they have to focus on the main love triangle of the show, which is Stefan, Damon, and Elena. And there are times we completely forget that there are other characters on the show. It annoys me. Um, but I like Bonnie as a character. I like how she's consistent. I think people crap all over her because she's not down with Damon. She doesn't like Damon. She doesn't think Damon's the best thing ever. And because of that, I am a fan of Damon. I know it's the, like, people are like, oh my god, Damon, Bonnie and Damon. Oh my god, that's horrible. But I like them as a couple because I think that Damon, everyone lets Damon get away with whatever the fuck he wants. No one calls him out on his actions. No one tells him what he's doing is wrong. Like Andy Starr, no one told him, yeah, you know, Damon, it's wrong that you're mind controlling, raping, and feeding on this innocent newswoman. That's wrong. No one said that. Everyone saw it. Bonnie is actually the person that calls people out on their shit. Like when Elena brainwashed Jeremy in season three, Bonnie called her out on it. When Damon, you know, in season two, the pilot, the, the very first episode of season two, uh, when they're at the mayor's house kind of mourning for Tyler's father, um, Bonnie tells Damon, one way or another, I will take you out if you do something wrong. I was like, yes! Like, Damon needs to be in a relationship with someone who can put his ass in check, who can call him out on his actions. That's why I liked Rose and Damon, because Rose was an older, more powerful vampire, and Rose would have called Damon out on his shit. Bonnie will call Damon out on his shit. I just really enjoy Damon in fan fiction, and in the show, it would make sense. I mean, like, in season two, there was definitely some Damon teasing. I mean, the 60s dance, where they're there, and they're dancing, and Damon's like, you know, Bonnie, is there any way to increase your odds? And she's like, oh, careful, Damon, I might just think you care. And the Damon's dancing, and Bonnie's watching him dance, and she's just and she's just smiling and kind of chuckling. I was like, oh my god, that was the Damon episode, and we get nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I hated it. But yes, I think I liked Bonnie. I especially liked Bonnie. Like, the season three finale, I hated it, but I loved Bonnie's scene where Klaus is in Tyler's body, and he's like, oh, the spirits will be happy with you, and she's like, I'm done being pushed around by you and the spirits. I was like, yes! Bonnie is such a strong character. I don't understand why people hate her. And I think that Cat Graham does a great job of playing Bonnie. I mean, like, one of my favorite 
episodes is definitely the episode. It's going to sound horrible, but it's the episode where Bonnie's Grams dies. Because that ending scene, when Bonnie comes in, Kat just did a great job of making me feel for her. I was... I get teary-eyed every time I watch that scene. She walks in, she's like, Grams! Oh my god! And she goes right for that spell book. And she's just flipping through it, trying to find a way to bring her Grams back. It's just a really sad scene, really sad moment. And it just really, like... It was the first time I actually really got so sucked into Bonnie's character that I was feeling for her on every level. Catherine. I love Catherine as a character. I love Catherine's background. I love Catherine. Catherine just reminds me so much of just like, you know, all the other awesome female vampires in shows like, you know, Drusilla, Lorena from True Blood. Just characters like that. You know, the awesome kick-ass vampire chicks who survive, who live, who, 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 just, who just have all kinds of crazy vampire fun. That's exactly what Catherine was. I feel like what she did to Damon and Stefan was extremely fucked up. What she did to Mason was extremely fucked up. But in the end, she's doing it so that she can survive. Although, with Damon and Stefan, it was more for her own benefit. She is an evil fucking character. But you know what? I love her anyway. I just... Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, come on. How can you not... She's like... One of those characters that you know is bad, but you can't help but love her. You're just like, oh my god, it's Catherine. Every time she's on screen, I'm just like, oh my god, it's Catherine. Yes, I love Catherine. Um, I think that the biggest thing I have about season two is that we had a little bit too much of Catherine. Just a lot, a lot, a lot of Catherine. She became like a regular character on the show in season two. And I don't want Catherine to become a regular on the show. I want Catherine to be you know, popping in and out of it, in and out of every season, uh, not so often that you feel like, oh, yeah, look, it's Catherine, but just every time you see her, you're just like, oh, my God, it's Catherine, like, that's what I want, I want to be excited when I see her, and when she, be when she becomes a regular on the show, my excitement kind of dials down, so I think that they need to use Catherine in moderation so that people keep getting excited. Um, I love Nina DeBrave as she plays Catherine. Nina plays so many different characters, and I think she does an awesome one. I love how Catherine is really the opposite of Elena. You know, Elena's willing to sacrifice herself for everyone. Catherine will sacrifice everyone to save herself. Elena's very selfless. Catherine's very selfish. Elena's kind of reserved, while Catherine's kind of loose. I mean, it's just, it's, it's awesome. I love how Nina plays that character. I love Catherine's background. My favorite C Catherine episode is Katarina. We finally get a look into Catherine, into why she does what she does, into her history. And to hear her talking about it herself is just awesome. And not in some weird, oh, I'm a bad guy, let me tell you my origin so you can feel sorry for me thing, but in a legitimate, here is my story. You know, it was just so awesome. It's an awesome episode itself. I love it. Right, now let's get to... Caroline and Tyler. I got a lot of feelings about these two, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut loose on you guys. All right. Now, Caroline and Tyler are, aside from singularly, they're two awesome characters, and Caroline is my favorite female character of this whole show. I love them as a couple, and I let me let me just talk about them singularly. Caroline, I love Caroline because in the first episode, in the pilot episode of the show. You got a feel for Caroline's character. I mean, like, when she was there in the bar with Bonnie, and she was kind of drunk, and she was like, you know, the new guy just goes right for Elena, and I try so hard, and I don't get him because everyone goes for Elena, no one goes for me. And then Bonnie says, Caroline, it's not a competition. And then Caroline says, yes, it is. You got such a feel for her character, and you feel kind of, you, you feel bad for her in a way, but you, you're also, there are times when you're like, oh, come on, Caroline, will you stop being so inappropriate? I mean, like, you know, the episode where... Damon brings her over to the the dinner or whatever, and, you know, they sit down, and then, you know, she says, oh, Elena used to be a lot more fun before her parents died. She says that right in front of everyone, including Elena. What? Caroline? Come on. And she's such an insecure neurotic in such a, a, a sweet way. I loved how Caroline's relationships, unlike everyone else's, Bonnie, Elena's, etc., it, they are well-developed. Her relationship with Matt and Tyler were well-developed. And her relationship with Damon in season one was so dark and so twisted. And I will never forgive Damon for doing that to Caroline. He hasn't even, he hasn't even apologized to her for doing that. Like, her and Matt, they interacted as if they knew each other only because Caroline was Elena's friend and Matt was Elena's ex. And they started becoming friends. And they went from being friends to being more than friends. And, like, that episode where they walk into the school and they're talking about, what was it, like... 
I think it was like American Idol or something or the X Factor and he, and Matt's just talking about how it was horrible and then you know Caroline's like oh well you made me watch Family Guy so you have to watch that with me and it's like they're friends really because they're already acting like a boyfriend girlfriend I loved it and then when they started dating it was sweet it was nice and you know season two Matt ending it with Caroline, um, I completely understand. And you know what? I completely understood why Caroline didn't want to be near Matt when she was first transitioning. She almost killed him in the woods. If Stefan hadn't stepped in, what would have happened? And it would have been horrible. Caroline would not have been able to live with herself for that. Um, you know, and she, she doesn't break up with him, but she makes him break up with her. And then later they get back together, and it's sweet, and then he finds out about everything. And I completely understand why Matt ended it with her. Because, you know, all in, you know, he finds out that the girl you love is a vampire and that she's known all about this and that it's just, it's, just, it's just a lot to take in. And I completely understand why he, he felt he had to break up with her, especially after he also found out the truth about Vicky and all that. It's just, it's a lot to take in and I completely understand why he broke up with her. Now, her relationship with Tyler Forwood is my favorite canon couple. I fucking love it. I love Forwood. I think it's great because you see saw them again it like like why i like matt and caroline you saw tyler and caroline develop and tyler caroline and matt is the only love triangle in this show as far that i think holds the most weight because as i said with damon stefan and elena damon's done so many horrible things to elena that if they were to hook up it would be kind of it would be ridiculous in my opinion because he's done so many bad things and he hasn't apologized or atoned for any of them but caroline matt and tyler it has the most weight because you see saw her develop with Matt and with Tyler. You saw her go from being, from knowing each, from her, her knowing Matt and her knowing Tyler, just because they grew up in the same town together and because they were in the same social group, to friends, to more than friends. You saw their relationship evolve, and that's what I love in relationships. Seeing them evolve on screen, and that's what we got with Caroline and Matt and Caroline and Tyler. And that's why that love triangle was the one that really affected me and the one that I feel holds the most weight. And now that, you know, it's, it's probably it's probably one of the most enjoyable things I have about season two. Um, you know, her, her sort of having to choose between Tyler and Matt. And ultimately, she would have been with Matt, but then Matt just couldn't be with her. And I feel like her and Tyler made more sense because, you know, they, they, they both had such a connection because they were both going through a huge change in their life. Caroline had just become a newborn. Tyler had just opened his, had just activated his werewolf gene. I feel like they could really lean on each other. She could, she could really share a part of herself with Tyler that she couldn't with Matt, you know, I think that that's why Four Wood is stronger. And I feel like the episode that just made, that cemented Four Wood for me was, you know, By the Light of the Moon, the episode where they, tra where Tyler transforms for the first time and Caroline risks her life to be there for him. So amazing. I love Four Wood. It's my favorite canon couple. Um, and Caroline, as a character herself, and I think that Candace Acola does an incredible job of playing Caroline. I mean, again, I'll say it, the Vampire Diaries writers are sadists. They love seeing her get tortured. But I completely buy when she's being tortured. I mean, like, every time that's happening to her, I'm just like, oh my god, Caroline, no! Like, I just hate seeing Candace in pain, and I love seeing Candace when she's happy. And um, for the actress, for, for Candace to affect me like that should show you something. For me to be able to feel every single thing that she's feeling when she's on screen, it definitely translates and it definitely shows you something she's a very talented actress i thought it was funny how she originally auditioned for the part of elena and then ended up becoming caroline kind of reminded me of when charisma carpenter went to go in for buffy and then she ended up becoming cordelia and everyone loves cordelia um you know it really did remind me of that especially caroline's characterization how she's kind of like cordelia etc 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 because you see her go from season to season to season, getting just more awesome and more better. And I love her in season three, Caroline, because she was solid in season three. Like, no matter how much Klaus was going after her, she was solid with Tyler. Good on you, Caroline. Good on you. You know, she, she, she was solid for her guy. It was awesome. It was great. Let's talk about Tyler. Now, I really like Tyler as a character now. But back in season one, I really disliked Tyler because he was a complete and utter asshole to Vicky. How he was treating her like she was nothing. How, you know, he would be like... It, it was ridiculous. Like, you know, like, you know he, he goes to her with school and, like, he, he almost rapes her in the woods. This is all in the pilot. He goes and almost rapes her in the woods and then Jeremy has to come in and he says, like, oh, Vicky Donovan saying no. That's a first. I was like, you asshole! 
you complete and utter douchebag. And like how he, how, and like how later Vicky's still with him and he drags her around in front of Jeremy and he's like, oh yeah, you can have her when I'm done. Who says that? Who says that? But then, you know, it all gets written off as being part of the werewolf gene. But whatever, he was still an asshole. But it's like you, you saw that there was more to his character. You saw that there was more to it than that. Um, you know, like the episode where, you know, his dad just like, like goes off on him at, you know, that little school event, the one where Logan Fell comes back, um, whatever. And Alara comes out and challenges Tyler's dad. And Tyler's dad runs off like a little bitch. And then Tyler and Jeremy, and then, you know, Tyler's like, and then Jeremy's like, you know, dude, is your dad always like that? Dude, that sucks. And, like, he, he tries to open up a dialogue with Tyler. Tyler ends up punching him in the face. And Jeremy's like, you know, what's wrong with you? And Tyler's like, I don't know. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to say this. That was the episode, I think, where Baron, where Jyler was born. And Jyler is my favorite fanfic couple. I know that there's no possible way it could happen on the show, and that's a real shame. But... God, I just love Jyler because he, because Tyler and Jeremy just have such a great dynamic. They were friend, they were they hated each other in season one. Then they started understanding each other, and then in season two, they started hanging out, they started understanding each other a little bit more, became kind of buddies. And then in season three, the episode where out of nowhere you see them hanging out after Tyler, you know, breaks up or goes on a break or whatever with Caroline. You see them having that their hangout session, and then it's revealed that that's only because you know. Klaus wanted him to get close to Jeremy to do that or whatever, and then Jeremy's and then Ty, and then and then Tyler goes to Jeremy. And he's like, "Listen, I didn't mean to do it. You know, I, th I think we're cool now." And it just upsets me that we haven't seen them hang out since then. And she's like, "Come on, Tyler and Jeremy, ah, oh, come on, we need this because they're awesome together." Ah, it just upsets me because their dynamic was so much more interesting than seeing you know Jeremy and Bonnie just happen for no reason, like legitimately legitimately if tyler and jeremy had like hooked up at some point in season three it would have made all the sense in the world to me and i'm not i don't mean like some tender moment or something i mean like just one drunken night where they wake up the next morning and they're just like dude what happened last night because we're in bed together that would have been awesome but then again that's fan fiction that's not the, the cw would never go there and that's a shame really michael trevino i think he's a great actor. I think he does a really great job. I feel like, again, the material he's given does not allow him to really showcase his acting. But the episode where, like, that just grabbed me and said, listen, Trevino's no joke, is again, by the light of the moon, the episode where he transforms and where he's portraying that pain. It's like, you feel it. It's like you're watching it and it's just like, you know, it hits you and you start to feel like a fraction of what he's going through. Again, like Candace, whenever she's being tortured or something, you feel it and you're just there and you're just like, oh my god. And for that to happen, it's just like, wow, this person is an actor. This person is really talented. Trevino is talented. Everyone was talking about him after that, and they totally should have been. Um, so, yeah, Forwood is my favorite canon couple. My favorite fan fiction couple is Jyler, both of which feature. Tyler is a character. Uh, I liked seeing Tyler transform with the seasons again. On season one, he's a complete asshole. In season two, after he finds out the whole werewolf thing, he's kind of trying to make himself better. He's on better terms with Matt. He's on better terms with Jeremy. You know, and then after he becomes a werewolf, he, he becomes real friends with Caroline. The forward kiss just had me jumping up and down. Um, you know, it wasn't a Jyler kiss, but whatever. It was a forward kiss, and it's just as good, because I love forward. I think it's great. Um... You know, it was great. It was awesome. I loved it. Um, what gets me about Tyler, though, is how every single season, every single season, he is shafted. And it's probably as bad as Bonnie. He will go half the season without being seen. In season one, it happened because he was just a normal side character. In season two, it happened because he had to go control of his werewolf side with Jules. And then in season three, it happened because he had to go break the sire bond. I'm just waiting for a point in season four where he'll leave town for some un for some obscure reason. And just be gone for half the season. And that's a real shame because Tyler has become, in my opinion, a strong character. And I want to see him more. I want to see him and Caroline together more. I don't want to see some chick come out of nowhere just to challenge this relationship. I'm going to get to everyone else uh, in my next character video. Look for that. It's going to be Vampire Diaries Characters Part 2. All right. Uh, good luck and luck, good luck and love. Comment, respond. Uh, let me know what you think about the characters that I just talked about. Let me know what, but, 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 uh, let me know what you think about the couples. Uh, you know, who's your favorite canon couple? Who's your favorite fanfic couple of the Vampire Diaries? You know, stuff like that. All right, peace.